AI in edu- AI in education. A bit of a hot topic. Hey, it's a hot topic everywhere, right? Um, I've got a bit of a media creation empire going on. <laughs> Can I use machine learning tools um, to help me create media for teaching? Um, which might help other people with me fumbling through it, right? Basically, I'm looking at three things. One, can I clone my voice um, to create podcasts? And then you could do text-to-speech to to automate podcast production. Um, We know that we can use large language models like ChatGPT to create a script and to research ideas, right? Uh, Number two, can I create an avatar that would replace me? Either to create a chatbot, which would then answer all your questions automatically, or that I could use it in videos instead of me. You know, that's an idea. And number three, uh, illustrations for embryology videos. Can I use it to help me make illustrations? Right, let's uh, let's do the voice stuff first, shall we? So I have already trained, trained a voice. I've created a couple of voices using my own audio files from, from podcasts that go out on the Detectable Me podcast. Chucked a couple of those in and I've made a couple of voices um here's the first one if we then ask chat gpt to create us a script and then we can copy and paste just the first part of that script um into this service using my trained voice and see what comes out hello and welcome to the science podcast where we explore fascinating topics in science and technology Today, we are going to talk about the vestibulo-ocular reflex, or VR for short. That's me. That's that's not me, is it? That's a voice trained on my voice that's supposed to sound like my voice that's taken the text and created... Are you impressed? I'm not, imp- I'm not impressed with that one. All right, let's, <laughs> let's try another service. Here's another one I've trained. So again, I've given this some recorded audio, good quality recorded audio, typical things I use for my podcast. And I've put it in here, we pasted the same text in. What do you think of this one? Hello and welcome to the Science Podcast where we explore fascinating topics in science and technology. Today we're going to talk about the vestibulo-ocular reflex or VR for short. This is a reflex that helps us to see clearly while our head is moving. Have you ever wondered how you can read a book while riding a bus? Or how you can keep your eyes on a ball while playing tennis? The answer is the VR. <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds close, doesn't it? But it's got a bit of a monotone, which I work quite hard not to you. All right. It can be done. You can clone your voice. You can get text from a large language model and make podcasts. I'm sure I could make a script. But anyway, what do you think? Tell me what you think about that. So that's the voice bit. So I can clone my voice, kind of. There are a number of companies that offer this as a service. It's an automated thing. Um, I, I did find myself in many cases handing over my email address and all my purposes, why I want to use this to the company before it would actually give me the example back. Um, so I handed over quite a lot of information to get trials and, you know, but they're out there. So this was a free example, and if you like it, then you can you can pay for more. Now this um, this VoiceMy.ai company, which does the voice coding and text to voice, they also do the face swap video. So this is kind of not exactly what I'm looking for in making an avatar, but this is a this is typical of the service you can see online. There are lots of services like this, and it's a form of deep faking, deep learning faking in that. You can take an existing video and you can transpose somebody's face onto it, kind of. It's not what I want, but there are a number of services that do this. Also, there are a lot of services that already have avatars and text. They already have avatars and voices. So you can create a video. If you wanted to create like a corporate video or maybe a teaching video, but you didn't have the video equipment or you didn't want to stand in front of the camera, you could use one of their talking heads, one of their avatars, which are semi-rigged. And this is kind of a, mm, maybe it's a form of deep fake, I don't know, but you can, you know, put your PowerPoint slides in the background. um, Then you've got a face, you've got a voice, you just put your text in there 
and it creates a video for you, which isn't what I'm looking for, but would be useful for a lot of people, I'm sure. There are services that will, um, well, do a bit of deep faking for you, so they'll you know transpose your face onto an existing video. Again, not what I want, but pretty impressive. Um, but you can also create a video of yourself speaking in one language and get it, it'll translate it and clone your voice and get you to speak the same text in another language and move your lips to match, kind of. Uh, check this out, see what you think. Marhaba. اسمي سام ويبستر واحب صنع فيديوهات عن علم التشريح والجنين لاني ادرسهم على الطلاب احب مساعده الناس في تعلمهم للوصول الى اي مكان يرغبون فيه وفهم اجسامهم والعالم بشكل افضل صحيح امتد هذا لانني يجب ان اجعل الفيديو طويلا ل... If you see a video of Elon Musk giving a talk about creating this revolutionary AI stock market tool that will make you rich for a small investment. If it sounds good, too good to be true, right? It probably is, that's the old adage. And there, this is a classic um, scam. There are lots of these scams going on. As soon as you knock one down, another one pops back up again. But this is what they've used. This is the technology that they've used. You've cloned Elon Musk's voice. You've used a bit of Elon Musk video. You transpose your own script over the top of that. If you listen to what he's saying, it's clearly not something he would say. It's a long sales pitch. Hi, my name's Sam Webster and I like making anatomy and embryology videos because I teach anatomy and embryology videos to students and I like helping people along their learning pathways getting to wherever it is they want to get to. Anyway, watch out for that scam. This is how you, you, you could create one of these yourself. I'm not saying you should create a scam. I'm not saying you create a scam. I'm just saying, that the technology is so wide nowadays that anybody could create one of these things. So this isn't exactly what I'm looking for either. It's it's useful, it's cool, I could maybe get something that kind of works, but to be honest, in my situation, with all the video gear I've got, I might as well just make a video like I normally do, like this, because it's easy for me. Um, but if I wanted to make an avatar, making like, you know, a custom avatar that looks like me, that's got all the joints rigged and it's a lot of work. It's way too much work for these automated services. Maybe there's a character model that already exists that I could make use of. Final chance then, um, you guys often ask me if I would make embryology videos because um, when I did my PhD, embryology was part of that, I've done postdoc, I've, I've been an embryologist and now I teach embryology and I would love to make embryology videos but embryology is, well it's, it's harder than anatomy because you don't have just the spatial stuff but you have the temporal stuff. That is, you have 3D structures and they change over time. Really, to describe embryology, I want some really good quality illustrations. I'm no good at drawing. I don't really want to use a whiteboard. Yes, I have written a textbook, Embryology at a Glance, which is filled with illustrations, but I don't own the copyright to those. The publisher does. I have thought about hiring an illustrator, but this is expensive and it's a bit slow given the speed at which I work. So, maybe I could use Dali to create illustrations for me. So I tried. <laughs> oh, I tried. Now, my daughter is an artist, so she's not a fan of Dali. These image to, sorry, these text to image creation tools. What images were they trained on? Were the, did the owners of those images give permission for them to be used in these models? Were they paid? Were they rec recompensed for, for that? Is this going to replace the work of illustrators in, and so on and so on, right? These are the issues. My son is the same. He's a, he's a writer uh, and he worries about large language models taking over his work, but his work is so bespoke, so niche, so up to date that large language models ain't going to be able to do what he does. Um, but it's, it's a worry, right? I put in some very specific prompts, I think. Uh, the primitive streak in the embryo viewing the ectoderm surface, because that's where the primitive streak is, right? You couldn't mix that up for for anything else, could you? What? It's, 
and it's generated these amazing, terrifying, often slightly horrific illustrations. Um, I asked it to draw me an illustration of the primitive streak and I got this. The primitive streak is a super early event in the embryo's development. The embryo is just like an oval shape. It's just a flat oval of cells and the primitive streak is the groove we see in the midline is that single sheet is becoming three sheets. Not this, not this mad complexity. And look at these labels it's like it knows an illustration should have labels but what's it done with it it's like it's made up its own language it's like it's got a bit of elvish in there or something it's made... <laughs> some of this is proper mad isn't it i asked uh the three germ give me make me an illustration of the three germ layers forming during gastrulation in the human embryo like i say Variation on the primitive streak. Super, not this. Not, not that. What's going on with it? Not that. Not this. Um, the neural plates forming in the embryo in cross section with the germ layers and the notochord. If I said that to a human that understood embryology, you'd know what I meant. Not this madness. I also asked for some brain illustrations, you know, like. Um, Maybe an illustration of the decussations of the human nervous system. Wow, what is that? It's beautiful, but what is it? And also, uh, I wondered if it could should make me an illustration of the cranial nerve nuclei of the brainstem. I mean, sure, that's a complex topic, but it's pretty clear what I want, and it's not that. So I put these on my wall as confusing and occasionally horrifying forms of art, but then <laughs> they're absolutely no use whatsoever to me in teaching, right? Where on earth have the base illustrations come from that have been combined to make this stuff? It's, it, so I will be employing Annabelle in the future. She's studying art at GCSE and hopefully an A-level soon. I will be employing her in the future <laughs> to draw my illustrations for any embryology videos that I make. So what's the score at the end after looking at all those AI tools? I can kind of clone my voice, don't really want to use it, I might as well use my own voice. Um, uh, I could do a little bit of deep fakery, but it's not really great. It's not really production quality, is it? Um, unless I wanted to do like a simple whiteboard present. No, no, that's not working. Can't create an avatar yet, but maybe Gail and I can get together and hash something out. And the illustrations for teaching, uh, well, just no. Not, not my teaching anyway, just no. So, a pretty abject, a pretty abject failure on all fronts. Pay attention to my future podcast. See if you can tell, see if you can tell that it's me, right? Detectable me.